Hey guys, I'm back. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, some of you guys have been asking to see things like this for a long time, um, and I just never really had a good reason to bring them out on the channel. But, what I'm going to review today is, is geared specifically towards those with this particular weapon. Today we're going to be looking at the Leatherman Mutt and doing a full review on it, because I've talked about the Mutt a lot on the channel. I refer to it often. It is one of my all-time favorite multi-tools. I love this little guy. It's very useful, and, you know, as a career military type dude, it had a lot of extra use because this is actually the, um, I forgot exactly what it's called. They have an EOD version, and they have kind of like a uh, marksman version, we'll say. I could probably very easily look it up, and I'll, I'll have to put text in. But this particular mutt is focused on not only being a good multi-tool, a really good all-around multi-tool, but for helping you with maintenance, specifically on your M16, M4, slash AR-15. So we're going to show some of the features that this has using my rifle here. I've got it pretty much stripped down. I don't, I don't strap a lot of stuff to my rifle, guys. Um, I know there are some folks who want to invest more than the rifle's worth in gear and accessories, um, I, I was never really into that. I have an ACOG that is not here right now. <clears throat> I like to practice with iron sights because, you know, it's pretty easy to teach anybody how to shoot fairly effectively with a reflex sight. But iron sights, that's a perishable skill. If you don't maintain that, if you don't keep that up, you will lose that. So when I go to the range, I want to make sure I'm maintaining my, uh, my battle sight zero and that I am, you know, still as proficient with the good old iron sights as I ever was as, you know, my days as a troop on the line. And then I'll put some of the fancier stuff on there just to look cool and, you know, tack to cool it up and whatever. But when I shoot, this is this is really as fancy as it gets. Uh, I will mount scope sometimes every once in a while. Um, I will, like I said, put an ACOG on there. Uh, but... What you see is what you get. Um, <clears throat> there you go. Maybe one day I'll break out the old, good old XD and put that on the channel too. Before anybody complains that you know my, my weapon is on fire and not safe, those of you who don't know, when this is in storage and you are done cleaning it, it doesn't go on safe. It needs to actually be wrapped. It needs to be ready for a fight for it to be on safe. When it's in storage, the selector, since the hammer is down, um, it's on fire. So there's nothing wrong with this weapon. It is not potentially going to shoot. It can't go to safe because I don't have anything uh, cocked. I have not pulled the charging lever, anything like that. I actually just broke this down for cleaning and, and yada yada. So, sorry, that is totally off topic. But let's talk about the Leatherman Mutt. <clears throat> so this is a fairly expensive multi-tool. And when we look at all the multi-tools we're going to look at, this is probably one of the most expensive ones that we're going to take a look at. But I really think that the high price on this has a lot of value. And I, you know, I'm kind of filming this in a different place than I normally do. So I, I, I've got the camera basically working upside down here. So I apologize if the angles are a little weird sometimes. So on the Leatherman Mutt, you've got 16 different tools. Some of them are focused specifically towards breaking down and working on this, on this rifle right here. A couple of them have multiple uses outside of that, you know, that, that are for the rifle work have uses outside of that, but there are some that are specifically for, that are just for working on your rifle. So I'm going to, right here, I'm going to list the basic specs about the thing, so we can check that out before we, we break it all down and we look at everything in it. Looking first at the sheath, this is kind of the, the standard issue Leatherman tactical nylon sheath that they, nylon, I'm sorry, that sounded weird, nylon sheath that they put a lot of their modern tools in. Um, it's Molly compatible, <clears throat> so you can attach this to Molly. You can use this strictly as a vertical carry. You can also use this, um, rig it up for a horizontal carry if you want. You've got some options. Uh, it's, a, it's a good rugged nylon sheath. I really like it. Uh, it's got a really solid Velcro catch on there. Very noisy though but you know, it's there. <clears throat> it's, 
It has uh, an external pouch right here for one of the tools, well, two of the tools actually, that come with it, um, just for use with the M16 slash M4 slash AR15. Uh, front sight adjustment tool and a 3 8 inch wrench. We'll look at that in a minute. <clears throat> and I apologize also, I'm getting kind of a cold out here. Winter sucks. It's got an internal slot for an extra set of bits and we'll look at those as we go through this and what it does. These are extra, these are not part of the thing, but we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, but this is the same kind of sheath that comes with a lot of different Leathermen now. It's a standardized sheath, it's um, expandable, it's got elastic on the outsides to keep everything in there tight, but still give it the ability to expand, <clears throat> to hold. So, um, just good quality, rugged material sheath. So let's look at the parts that are not attached. And this little guy right here is really one of the primary things that separates the firearms mutt from the EOD mutt. A front sight adjustment tool and a 3 8 inch wrench. Um, so if you've ever done work on an AR-15 or an M16 or an M4, whatever it happens to be, and yeah, you guys be surprised, you know, you might want to say, well, the M16 has gone away and it's the M4. A lot of reserve guys and a shit ton of National Guard dudes still run around with M16, A2s, and A3s. Um, so the M16 is still a valid weapon system. It's it's still there a lot. Um, so uh, let's see. So the front sight adjustment tool. Now, if you're not familiar, but when you adjust your front sight for either setting your, you know, your battle sight zero or just adjusting your sight on the range or whatever, there's kind of a complicated way to adjust this front sight post. Um, one of the easy ways to do it is to take the tip of a bullet and stick it in, there's a post in there, and rotate it. You're not supposed to do that, but that's what we all do in basic training. They teach us that trick, and that's what I've been doing for years and years. You can also use uh, a nail <clears throat> or just something that fits in there. So this is actually sized specifically to fit inside that post and wrap around the entire front side post and depress that little lug and let you turn to adjust. It's very, very easy. A lot easier than a lot of the other methods and a little bit safer too because you're not putting like a, a nail in there or something that might skip out and mess up anything might bend that uh, that sight post or, or cut you or anything like that so this is a pretty useful tool if you are really into shooting uh, if you are not really into shooting this might not be the tool for you i love to get out on the range and you know when i was still active um and i was still in a, a deployable bucket so it was what we called it. Um, I would want to make sure that my skills were as fresh as possible because one of the things you have to do is you have to, in a, in a combat deployable unit, is qualify every so often to maintain qualification. And no matter how recently you've qualified before you deploy, you have to go through the entire requalification process with your weapon. So this tool is useful to me in personal life, you know, just shooting for fun and professionally. This works out really, really well. The 3 8 inch wrench is a 3 8 inch wrench. You can use it to adjust certain things. On. Now let's look at the main tool itself. <coughs> um, so it's not very good at one-handed operation. You can open it up with one hand. It's a little bit of effort, but you can do it. Um, closing it with one hand is definitely not really going to work. Um, getting it closed, this, this, this limb takes a lot of effort <clears throat> to get back closed, but you can do it. On the outside here are some of your primary tools. Your knife is very easily accessed with one hand, which I love, and it's got a nifty little lock right there. Um, kind of a liner lock almost. It's a three inch blade, um, fine edge and serrated edge. Um, I've used this, uh, this knife occasionally, because I usually have a regular knife with me too, but this is one of the better knives, in my opinion, on a multi-tool. Um, it's, a, it's a good length. It's a solid blade. It comes razor sharp out of the package. I don't have cutting stuff to demonstrate with. I have the, the black 550 cord you're used to seeing here. But, I mean, it just goes right through it like butter. No effort whatsoever at all. It just goes right through it. So I like that. That's a great feature especially when you just need to get that knife out for whatever your purposes are and then get it closed really easy, one-handed operation. Opposite that, now being right-handed, 
it's not as convenient, but you've got a very tough saw. I know I'm talking this one up, uh, and I, I recognize I'm partial to it. I'm not. This is not an impartial review. I really like this tool. Um, you've got a good solid saw. I have not used this, but I've used the exact same saw on another Leatherman, so I can tell you it cuts well. It does, and it also is you know locking and one-handed accessible. You kind of have to do it left-handed though. Uh, it's not going to work very well right-handed. And it's also a three-inch saw blade. Opposite those. <clears throat> This can be used for a couple different things. Uh, number one, this is removable and replaceable. So I've heard that Leatherman has planned to give you the option to put some different tools on here. For right now though, this is a, an AR-15 A4 takedown pin. To disassemble this rifle, there are a couple pins you have to push on. And this is designed specifically, oops, to push on those pins to let you disconnect your upper and lower receivers, which is which is cool, because if you don't have something that fits that very nicely, that can be a bitch sometimes. Those pins sometimes can be pretty sticky. Um, so I like having that. Now you can use this for a lot of other purposes. I have used this for multiple purposes. I've used this for pushing cord um, through a small hole. I've used this for <clears throat> um, just prodding little items I needed to. Um, I, once I used an awl to punch through a material, I've used this to like fasten material together to punch it together. So this is actually pretty useful. Uh, this is one of those things, like I said, it, its primary purpose is weapon maintenance, but this works for a, a multitude of things. And if they come out with a line of tools that can fasten on there also, that just expands its usefulness like greatly. And again, one handed accessible on the outside. <clears throat> the final external tool that you can kind of grab without opening anything up and messing with it is, and this is not one-handed operational, but it is replaceable also. It's a bronze carbon scraper. Those of you in the shooting community <clears throat> know that really stuck on carbon <coughs> is the bane of your existence when cleaning a weapon. So this is made to get in there and scrape carbon, but because it's bronze and it's not steel, it's not likely to mar up the inside of a receiver or the inside of a barrel. It's a softer metal. And that's also why it's replaceable, because it is a softer metal. It's gonna wear away. But again, if you take a look at the shape, you can use it as an awl, as a punch. Um, if you were so inclined, you could put more of an edge on it and use it as a cutting tool itself. So um, this is a good feature to have. I really like this. And you can see how dirty mine is. If you can tell, this has been used a lot in cleaning my weapon. It, it's really useful to get in little nooks and crannies uh, where brushes and snakes that just won't get. Uh, you can use this as a hammer. Uh, now, it's you know you don't have any leverage with it like you would a real hammer. It's basically fist power, but it's good to have. And this is a very effective line cutter. We've seen some some tools with with V cutters or line cutters that flat out suck. Other man's Razor sharp out of the package. I've done zero maintenance to this thing since I got it. Uh, it just works beautifully. <clears throat> it's external, but it's also protected. It's it's kind of, things are not likely to get cut in there by accident. You know, and that's what I like about it. The carabiner, yes, they do qualify that as a tool, which I hate, but it's also a bottle opener. Hashtag no more bottle openers. Um, but this is, you know, on their list of the, the 16 tools on this thing. Um, the carabiner slash bottle opener is tool number 15. So you have that. I've never really used the carabiner for anything because I usually keep it in its little sheath. So that's everything you have externally available. Let's open it up. So in here, and this is another pet peeve of mine. So they're gonna tell you you have two sets of pliers. You have needle nose pliers and regular pliers. I'm sorry, y you have two arms. They, they, it's one set, it's one tool as far as I'm concerned. It is, it is pliers. You know, when you buy needle nose pliers at a hardware store, it still has this internal, you know, um, I forgot what the technical term for that inside is. They don't tell you you're buying two sets of pliers. So I hate when multi-tools say, well, you've got needle nose pliers and regular pliers. You've got pliers, pliers are good. Don't rip people off by claiming these are two tools when it's really one tool. But you've got, you've got pliers. If you take a look there, tool three and four together, you've got your wire cutters and then a hard wire cutter right there in the middle. Now what's cool about these is that they are 154 cm steel, which is actually a, a pretty high grade steel. It's not the best, 
Um, there are harder, better steels out there, but that's actually a, a really good blade steel. Benchmade uses that as blade steel for a lot of their knives. So those are replaceable, um, and you know you can order more of those from Leatherman. If you look at these indents here on the sides, those just look like indents or something, but what they actually are, you can screw your standard cleaning rod into there. And then you can use your mutt as a handle for your cleaning rod. Um, you can actually get quite a bit of leverage if you fasten your cleaning rod through there. I wish I had a cleaning rod right now, but I don't. And you use this to push your cleaning rod or pull your cleaning rod through. So all of this is set up to really help you with cleaning your weapon. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention externally, um, when I said you can use this as a pry bar, you can, but what this actually is on the end right there is a bolt override tool. And a uh, bolt override is a horrible malfunction with your M16. I've never had it happen to myself, thank God. I've had uh, other malfunctions, but I'm going to show you exactly how the bolt override tool is used. So when you're firing, if a piece of brass, a live round, or um, just the you know expanded cartridge gets stuck at an angle up between the chamber and the bolt, you a lot of times can't apply corrective action because you can't pull that charging handle back. So what the bolt override tool lets you do is to hook it in and use that as a tool to pull the bolt back and to relieve um, that particular malfunction and then return your weapon to firing state. I think that's really cool. I didn't, I, like I said, I didn't even know what it was. Um, I've never heard of a bolt override. Uh, I'm sure they taught me that kind of malfunction in training once upon a time, but since it never happened to me, that's never a stoppage. I, I've stove piped, but I've never had a bolt override. It just is something that I've never particularly had to worry about. So. Uh, all we have left to talk about now is the the bit system, and it's got a really interesting bit system. So hidden here, you've got one, uh, and it is kind of a small bit, and this has gone through quite a bit of use, you can see. So this is a, a number one and two Phillips head and a 3 uh slot driver. And then this little pin system holds on to the other two built in. These come with the thing. So you push that down and you've got a second one. And then if you were to push down the other side and slide that out, this one tends to stick a little bit on mine. I don't know about on all of them. So now you have a number two Phillips head and a one quarter slot driver over here. And now you've got a 764th hex driver and a T15 star driver over here. Standard tools, again, geared towards the weapon maintenance side of the house. Now, really interesting, unique way that they mount in. You've got a little bit receiver at the end, and you just press down with just a little bit of pressure, and they lock right in there, which is, again, I think pretty cool whether you're using the long or small driver. Uh, if you can hear this in the background, I apologize. Um, Kyle's mom and dad are doing it on South Park right now, and it's pretty disturbing. Now, the Leatherman company makes sets of uh, drivers that you can buy. I'm sorry, not drivers, but bits. Uh, for $19.99, you get two of these. And that worked out really well because I have um, two Leathermen that use the exact same style of bits. So I bought one package and I'm able to keep one of these with my mutt and uh, another one in my, I can't remember what it is, but I can keep it in there. So if you don't want to carry a specific weapons related bit, you can just choose whichever one floats your boat here. And let's see, I'll just pick the 532nd and the uh, 964th hex bit. And guess what? In the slot where that original bit went, I can just put that right in there and I can carry it that way. Or, you know, I mean, there's no reason not to put your entire bit driver set in the slot it's intended for right there. But the point is, you get a lot more options to use in your driver. And what's really nice too is the way it's set up. You get a little bit more range, a little bit more reach, a little bulky around the edges there if you got to fit it into a tight space. Um, you only have two long bits, 
Putting these guys away is, is pretty simple. There is a little slot right there in the clip. Oh, I forgot to mention, this also has a belt clip. So if you choose not to roll with the sheath, you can just clip this right onto your gear. Use the carabiner clip, whatever you want. Slide this one, and then this pin has a center lock position. So now all the tools are locked in right there. Return this one to its little home. and it holds really securely, and it's all good to go. So overall, if you've got the money to spend on the Mutt, uh, like I said, comes in two versions. The EOD version, not too different uh, from the firearms version. It also has a little punch if you need to put detonators in a block of C4, and maybe one or two other small differences, but it's, it's not very different from this at all. So, um, you know, I, I really like it. Um, however, I'm gonna say, as much as I really enjoy this tool, um, you don't need one that is this expensive to be good quality, as you're going to see as we go through this series of multi-tool reviews. Um, I just, Leatherman's a good brand. I know all their qualities are backed up by a great warranty. Um, I bought this when I was still active duty, so you know what? I had some money to throw around. Uh, this is, is a good item. You can probably find some secondhand on eBay if the price tag is a little much for you. 160 bucks for a tool. I get it. <clears throat> it is a little bit... Um, a little bit to spend um, but you're getting a really solid quality item on this one um, and my attitude always is anybody that watches the channel for a while knows better to maybe save up a little bit of money and throw a bit of money down on a good quality tool one time than to um, buy a handful of cheap tools over and over and over if you have the option I mean I get it not everybody does let me know what you guys think of this and the features on it uh, if you're not a shooter though if you don't if, if you don't own a weapon, you know, if you don't own a rifle, maybe there's another multi-tool for you out there that's a little bit less expensive. This has tools you just flat out don't need. Anyway, guys, um, I need to get this wiped down. Uh, I need to put a little bit of CLP in there and let it sit before I put this back away. Um, her name is Penelope, by the way, in case anybody's wondering. For safety purposes, again. It is an empty magazine. I just keep it in there to keep dust out of the magazine wall. So, thank you guys. I appreciate you all. You were all awesome. Uh, keep the contest going. Uh, the more people that enter, the more work I have to do, but the more fun it is. So, um, keep getting your entries in. Remember, everybody can can change their entries one time. Just make sure you're telling me in your, your submission, this is changing my entries to whatever. Do me a favor, check out my Patreon page, look for the link in the uh, video description. Think about jumping on there, helping out this channel. I now, because of the Patreon supporters, uh, I have a plethora of cool boxes coming. We've got Never Enough Tactical, we have Survival Boxes, we have EDC Box, we have Battle Box, we have Ravencrest Tactical. There is one I'm forgetting, I can't even think about it, but we've got so many cool unboxings coming up in January, it's just going to be disgusting. Um, but that is all because of the awesome support of the Patreon folks. So uh, just check that out. Send me your Q&A questions for the upcoming January Q&A video. Look for the email uh, address in the video description. Um, all of your suggestions, all your requests, everything you guys want to see in future videos coming up, there's an email address for that in the video description too. So take care, guys. Thanks. I appreciate you, and I'll be back again real soon.